In Module 5, we're going to cover the MX6 data logging. Data logging is a method of storing gas readings electronically in the instrument's memory. These readings can then be downloaded to a computer for later reference and printout. The MX6 also allows for calculation of TWA, which of course is time weighted average, and STELS, which is short for short term exposure limit, for averaging gas concentrations over a particular time period. All data logged information can be viewed both from the instrument directly or through the computer after downloading has occurred. The MX6 can hold approximately one year's worth of information in the instrument's memory before downloading becomes a necessity. To access the data logging information from the real-time operating screen, if we press the on-off enter button twice, our three drop-downs of view, sensor, and data will appear. By using our right arrow, we can go over to data, press the on-off button for the drop-down, and the first option we're going to look at is new session. Our first option that we see here is to create a new session. By clicking OK, I'm going to take the old information and archive that in the instrument's memory, and then I'll be able to start data logging new information in the data logger, and I'd have them more than one session when I download my instrument. This is particularly useful if I have a couple different people that are utilizing the instrument. That way when one person coming in from the field is done with the instrument and they hand it off to another person, that person can create a new session so, that there's, so their information is not getting jumbled together. From new session, by hitting the down arrow, I can bring up another option called view data. Under view data, there are seven different screens that I can view. The first one that we can choose is reading graphs. The readings graph screen is actually going to show me graphically all my readings during that particular session. Now if I hit the down arrow, the next thing I can bring up is my TWA graph. My TWA graph is going to then show me graphically my time weighted averages over that time period. If I hit the down arrow from TWA graph, I bring up my next, which is TWA numeric. TWA numeric will show me the actual time weighted average readings numerically. But there are a couple gases like oxygen and combustible, which of course do not tabulate for time weighted average and therefore grayed out in their space will be the letters NA. If I hit the down arrow from TWA numeric, what will come up next is my STEL graph. The STEL graph will then graphically show me my readings over the past 15 minutes. But by pressing a down arrow from my STEL graph will come up now STEL numeric. STEL numeric will once again show me numerically my STEL readings. Of course, once again, oxygen and combustible gases have no STEL, therefore grayed out in their space will be the letters NA. Pressing the down arrow from STEL numeric now allows me to bring up my event log. My event log screen is going to show me my last 15 alarm events. The instrument is capable of storing up to 15 alarm events. As you'll see in this example, we're looking at alarm event 15 of 15. Then the sensor It'll show, in this example, that the H2S sensor was an alarm. Under peak, it'll show the maximum reading that the H2S sensor was an alarm. In this example, it's 22 ppm. And then it'll show the alarm time. This is the duration of time in which the instrument was an alarm. In this instance, we're seeing there that it's 2 minutes and 44 seconds of alarm time. The instrument will then show me the date of when the instrument alarm took place and of course the time that that alarm also took place. And as I was saying before, it'll store a maximum of 15 alarm events and it always retains the last 15 so it'll cycle in and out alarm events as new alarm events occur. If we press the down arrow from event log, our last option, memory status, will appear. 
Memory status will actually show me how much more time is remaining in my data logger. Under recording intervals, the instrument is going to show me what my current recording interval is set to. As we see in this example, 60 seconds is my recording interval, which means every 60 seconds information is being logged in my data logger. Now, it doesn't just take a snapshot during that 60 seconds. No, it takes all my readings during that 60 seconds, gives me an average, and then plots it in the memory. So every minute, I get an average reading with a plot, an average, and a plot. With 60 second intervals, I can log data for up to a year, but I can set this anywhere from once a second to once every 300 seconds. How we change that recording interval is covered in our next module, which will be module six. What you'll see underneath recording interval is my current session. As we see in this example, we have three sessions currently in the instrument. And because it shows a three, I know I'm currently logging in session number three. But when I download, I'll have three separate files to download. And then the bottom, you'll see there is my remaining time showing me how many more days, hours, minutes, and even seconds left until my data logger is completely full. If I scroll from View Data down to Comments, once I enter into Comments, this is where I could actually type in a comment with my instrument. Now I have to use the up and the down arrows and the left and the right and scroll through the alphabet to actually type in a comment. But once I type a comment in, when I download, that comment will be there to view. Along with entering comments, I can also delete comments as well. By clicking OK, I will then confirm that I am indeed going to delete that comment. And then my last option underneath data is User Sites. By pressing my On Off Enter button at User Sites, I then have two options I could bring up, which is Set Current User and Set Current Site. Looking at Set Current User brings up the screen. Because I can data log hundreds and hundreds of hours of information, Oftentimes that information isn't all that practical unless I can tie all those readings to a particular user. By setting set current user, I'm then able to select a user in which all those readings for that session will then be applied. And also the same thing by scrolling down to set current site. I can then select a site in which all those readings are going to be applied to as well. Next, we can look at the current different data logging modes that are available in the MX6. We have standard data log, log on alarm, and snapshot. We're going to spend a little time in talking about each one of these individually. My standard data logging mode, with this type of data logging option selected, the MX6 will continuously store gas readings into the instrument's memory. The data logger can be configured to log readings at different time intervals, anywhere from once a second, all the way up to once every five minutes. The MX6 will store a maximum of approximately one year's worth of information when a data logger is at 60 second intervals. But log on alarm is also another option that I have for my data logger. For those who don't want to continuously data log, Log on Alarm is a great option, because with this type of data log option selected, the MX6 will only log data when the instrument is alarm. So rather than downloading hundreds of hours of all zeros, the only thing I'm downloading are actual alarm conditions. And this is a very useful option for those who do not continuously data log, yet would like a record of a reading in the event that the instrument goes into alarm. This option we also call event logging. And the last option I have for my data logger is the snapshot. With this type of data logging option selected, the MX6 will record the instrument's reading upon double clicking my down arrow button. Whenever I double click my down arrow button with the snapshot mode enabled, it's actually going to take the reading, put it in the data logger, and add to it a time and a date stamp. This is particularly useful for those who are trying to monitor VOC release points. Maybe they're trying to maintain records of a VOC release point, but rather than continuously data logging, they'll just capture a reading of that VOC release point with a time and date stamp, so when they download, they have those records available. 
Depending on how your data log is configured, different icons may appear on your instrument's display to give you an indication of your data log status. If I see a yellow cassette tape, that's my indication that my data log memory is between 80 to 90 percent full. If I see a red cassette tape, this would indicate then that my data logger memory is greater than 90% full or that maybe my data logger is completely full. If I see a red cassette tape, this is my indication I probably should have the instrument downloaded very, very soon. But if I see a little alarm clock icon, this would be my indication that my log on alarm option has been activated. Therefore, now the instrument will only log data whenever the instrument goes into alarm. And then, of course, the last option I may see shown on the, my instrument display would be my camera icon. The camera icon indicates, of course, that the snapshot option has been selected in my instrument, and thereby double-clicking my down arrow, I'm able to then capture my readings with a time and date stamp. If I see no icon shown on the instrument display. This would indicate, of course, that my instrument is continuously data logging and I have in excess of 20 percent of the memory life left. Not only can I data log information and view it on the instrument's display, but I can also take that same information, download it to a PC by using something called a data link software kit. That's what you'll see here pictured. Once my software is installed, the following screens are screens that I'll see during my downloading procedure. Up on the screen, what you'll see highlighted in the red box, and one of the things that's going to draw your attention first before you download, is that we have to ensure that MX6 Hybrid is selected as our option under Instruments. We also then have to ensure that we have the correct COM port selected. Once I have the MX6 instrument in its cradle, by clicking connect, I'll then be able to communicate with the instrument. Once we establish communication with the MX6, this screen that you see here will appear. Notice that there are six different tabs. We're going to review each one of these tabs in the screens to come. You'll notice under general, it's going to show us how the instrument is currently configured shown us things like serial number and a type of instrument and even all the way down to its configuration software. On the opposite side it's going to show you some of the instrument's configuration settings. I can also not only view what the how the instrument is set up here but I can also change these values as well. Now in the next module to come which is configuration we're going to talk about what each one of these means a little bit more thoroughly and how you change it in the instrument itself but remember that I can also do it through the data link. From my option tab once I have that selected this screen will appear. From this screen the MX6 can be configured to the user's particular needs. By using my drop downs, I can actually change some of these settings. For example, I could set my clock or even change my display type just by manipulating the drop downs. And on the other side, I have little boxes that I can check. Whatever box is checked is the current option that is available in the instrument. I can then check and uncheck these different options to turn these options on and off. Once again, when we get to Module 6, we're going to explain these options in detail. If I click on my Components tab, this screen will appear. What this screen allows me to do is view the type of sensors and or battery pack that's installed in my instrument. Along with that, I have the serial numbers, position, and whether these sensors are enabled or not enabled. This is particularly useful information, whereas I don't have to crack open my instrument to gather this information. Rather, it's viewed right there on a computer screen for me. If I click on Profiles, this screen will appear. The Profile screen will display all the available profiles that are already set up in my instrument. From here I can add a profile, I can remove a profile, I can open up a profile, whereas I could have extra profiles set up in my instrument for use by different operators. 
And my next tab is Event Log. By clicking on the Event Log tab, this screen will appear. By clicking Download, I can download the last 15 alarm events in the MX-6. With this information displayed on my computer, I can then actually take this information and I can print it, or export it, or save it for later use. My next and my last tab is my data logging tab. By clicking my data logging tab, this screen will appear. If I have standard data logging enabled in my MX-6, downloading the information from within that data logger is simply done by clicking my download button. This will then download all the sessions onto my display for viewing. At this point, I can then highlight a session of interest and then click Open File. Now, all the detail of the sensors involved in those gas readings will be displayed on the instrument. If I wish to then view one particular sensor reading, I highlight that sensor and then I click Detail. Now that we have selected a sensor, we can drill down even further into the information about the data logger. You'll notice that there's 12 different readings available for this sensor. By highlighting and clicking Detail, I'll then be able to gather the information on those 12 readings. Now I can view the details of my sensor readings. You'll notice if I have any, any indications in red, that's an indication that that sensor was an alarm. Now if I want to view those readings graphically, I can just pick one individual sensor by highlighting it. Once I have it highlighted and I click Graph, I can now view the readings graphically. So what we're looking at now is a graphical representation of all the readings that took place during that time period. Now if I wish to compare my readings with a previous session, by clicking the Compare button, I can then compare those readings from one session to another session. But now let's look at downloading my information if I have my log data on alarm only selected as my data logging option. What we're looking at now is all our specific alarm events. If I wish to view one, I can highlight it and by clicking open file, I can now view that information. As you'll see, all my readings will then be displayed on the computer and they're all in red and that's because the instrument only logged this data when it was in alarm. If I wish to graphically view this information by clicking graph I can now see it graphically. With my instrument sensor reading showing graphically on my computer screen I could take this Im same information and I can print it, I can export it, or I could save it for future use. If the snapshot mode has been selected on the MX-6, viewing the information is done by first clicking on data logging. And once my data is pulled in, if I wish to view one specifically, I can highlight it and then click Open File. And with this screen, it'll show me the actual reading with a time and a date stamp.